all research that we are doing can be used for the betterment of humankind or it can be used for hurting humans. I'm Eckhart Wimmer. I'm a professor of microbiology at Stony Brook University on Long Island. The synthesis of a virus can be used to make vaccines. You can change the virus by designing it beforehand and then synthesizing different variants of that virus. Useful for vaccines, the synthesis of viruses can be used to find out why a virus is so dangerous. The synthesis of virus, with other words, is very, very useful for combating actually viral disease, increasing our knowledge about viruses in general. At the same time, the synthesis of viruses could also be very dangerous to humans. If somebody were to synthesize a dangerous virus and release it into the population, it could cause chaos. And this fine line that we're walking as scientists must be aware to all of us and particularly to students that enter experimental science. And as teachers, we have to always tell, particularly in the medical sciences, that fine line of dual use research. I have worked for many years with viruses, human viruses, about almost 50 years. And uh, my favorite virus, with which I um, have been intimately uh, associated is poliovirus. Poliovirus is a very small RNA virus, very stable, that has caused endless trouble worldwide until the 1960s when two American scientists developed vaccines. Because of these vaccines, the incidence of poliomyelitis declined rapidly. And in fact, the World Health Organization would like to eradicate the virus altogether. In 2002, we had synthesized the entire genome, the entire segment of the brain of poliovirus. The brain called the genome is a nucleic acid. And out of this, we were very simply able to make the virus itself. With other words, in 2002, we published a paper that we had recreated poliovirus from the information in the internet. Um, no virus was necessary. No natural virus was necessary. This was an enormous shock. Not for a lot of people, they anticipated that to happen because the technologies had been developed over many, many years to do that. And as often is, there's accumulation of knowledge, accumulation of new technologies, and there's a jump to some new level. And that was when we synthesized a virus. That is to say, the parent of this virus that we synthesized was the computer and not just some virus in the wild. And because the brain of polyvirus, the nucleic acid chain, was described and available for everybody in computers, everybody could repeat our work and synthesize poliovirus, because there are 4,000 those genomes of 4,000 different viruses in the internet that you can recover with your computer. Theoretically, you can recreate 
recreate, not create, recreate 4,000 different viruses. Amongst them, for example, smallpox virus. So the impact of that new development was enormous. For once, there was a fear that this could be misused, this technology could be misused for bioterrorism. You need money in order to do research because it is expensive to synthesize a virus. You need instrumentation, you need uh, the chemicals to do this and so on. How do you get this money? You apply for funding from government or other private agencies. And these, and these agencies, particularly the government, will very carefully look at every application, whether or not it could be misused for the making of viruses. And so, it, in fact, it is an administrative nightmare for a scientist to do something that the government doesn't like. But it's very important, give an example, there is a possibility to make a virus worse than it currently is. Maybe a virus that infects chickens, but not yet humans. And so there was research going on that would like to find out how much this virus needs to change in order now to also infect humans, but be still a very bad virus. This is called gain of function. And after a very big discussion, the government has stepped in and had says, stop to those experiments. We have to first reevaluate, reassess the benefit and the danger inherent to those experiments. Has the field of the synthesis of viruses in general rapidly develop further so that since let's say 2007 so that now totally new things could be done and the answer is no it's still like it was in 2007 you can synthesize virus you change them you test them whether they are candidates for vaccines what has changed however is the speed by which you can do things the speed is still not high enough to be super excited. It still takes too much time. Because if you have a new virus coming up, like Zika, we cannot make a vaccine in five weeks. And that's what we want to do. In principle, we are still doing what we did 2007, 2008. We are expecting uh, a jump in the making of nucleic acids. And once that is achieved, there will be a jump. So ideally, if you know in March of a year, what influenza virus will come up in the next season, we could make a vaccine in six weeks. <laughs>